our Lord at that moment of celebrating the Passover with the disciples was full of the optimism and the faith of his mission. Yes. It was a moment that is prophetic. Today, there's a revelatory prophetic reality to the fact that the Lord is sitting right in your house. You're sitting right in his house. You're eating right in his presence. His healing belongs to you. His deliverance belongs to you. His salvation belongs to you. His presence is yours. If you have your Bible, please stay on your feet and turn with me in the Word of God to Luke, the 22nd chapter. The 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished, there make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Amen. Amen. Hold the Bible above your head. This is the word of God. Not an opinion, not, opinion. Not, tradition, not tradition, not subject to debate, not subject to debate. Alive. alive, God said it, God said it. I, believe it. I believe it, and that settles it, that settles he, it. Is he, is. he is who he says he is, he will do what he said he will do, I am who he says I am, I am, who he says I am. Today. today, 
I have what he says I have today. And I can do what he said I can do now. Now, if you believe that, let's celebrate the Lord a little bit. You may be seated and we welcome our global movement that is on the Lord placed on my heart strongly the direction to go today and before the day is over I believe there's going to be a revolutionary transformation in our lives. There is a thread woven throughout the canon of our sacred scriptures, both in the old, from the book of beginnings, all the way into the revelation of the beloved John. And that thread is believed by theologian, by, by theologians, by ancient churches, by even modern strong uh, groups, whether independent or denominations, to be the principle of progressive revelation. That means that if all we had was the book of Genesis, and that's all we had to read, we would have whatever revelation the Spirit of God can bring out of that book. And so looking forward, whether it's the first five books of Moses, looking forward, we would have limited foresight. Of course, if we have a personal relationship with God revealing personally some things to us, we might see some shortcuts. I'm talking about if we only had a few books. Now, don't look at me like that because I haven't said too much yet. (laughs) Are you following? In other words, Enoch had no scriptures. But God chose for some reason to reveal to him how to walk with God at a time when he, his name means initiator someone who starts something and he's living at a time when more than probably Adam was still alive. So we do the math. I work alone, Shliha. We, we do the math, right? And we see Adam lives a, a thousand years. Well, during that time, Enoch walks with God 300 and 65 years without anything written but he has a revelation from the brilliance of the person of God into his spirit that made him know beyond the shadow of a doubt that he pleases God so he went around saying I please God for the book of Hebrews tells us because he had this testimony (laughs) It's called a shortcut. That's what I got through telling you. He took a shortcut. Through faith, he was caught up and did not see death and did not go by way of the grave because God took him because he had this testimony. Not not, not that he had this testimony and then got accepted by God, but his conscience was so clean by God, the one who's looking for somebody that he can show himself mighty on their behalf. That's why we're here tonight. God's going to do something in you that makes you superior to the age you're living in and the hour you're accompanying. No, but that's the exception rather than the rule because Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that this side of the new covenant. And then the just shall live by 
faith or the just shall live by his faith and faith co- how will they how will they believe unless they hear how will they hear without a preacher well who was Enoch's preacher I don't know <laughs> but some people probably said some things about God to them they may have had a smaller assessment maybe even as far as great 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 set you know, Adam, a small assessment of what's available in 2024. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> a small assessment of the age. Are you listening to me? But the Lord took that little seed and went bang in the heart of somebody called Enoch. And he started walking with God. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. And so that thread, remember the thread woven is progressive revelation, meaning that as the Lord would add, which he added till he made it totally impossible for any human to fulfill what was predicted about him. And then the word became the human that fulfilled everything that was predicted about him. When all of humanity could go back and measure thousands of years and say, oh, this one said this that far ago and that far away and this and that and the other. And then in a moment of time when the fullness of time comes, boom, the Lord steps in and everything that was said about him is getting fulfilled so that through all eternity, all of the angelic hosts of heaven and the saints of the redeemed will be able to tell that it had to be the Lord. Amen. But progressive revelation also means mysteries. Mysteries means hidden things. The, the, the Greek word for that is mysterion. It means also things communicated sometimes without utterance. So often, I want to I wanna lead you tonight. Will you follow me? Yes. That means because, remember, how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach except they be? Well, who's going to send them? So he has to anoint them. Why? Because words aren't enough. So audio has to, audible has to carry spiritual to hit the heart as well as the intellect, so that from the inside out, man can respond to God, who is a spirit. Glory be to God. So mysterion means that while God is talking and somebody's having stuff bounce off their intellect, they don't know why their spirit man is jumping up, yes, and amen to that thing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that... That thread means certain things that are hidden. Now, the scriptures tell us he, uh, he revealeth the deep and secret things. God is a revealer of the deep and secret things. Well, what, so does that mean that there's no more revelation for me? If there's no more revelation, there's no more growth. Right. Now, now somebody said, well, there's no other revelation but the Bible. Well, you got to do more than read the Bible. Because the Bible reads you. You, you, want, you, want, you want a verse on that? You want Bible on that? I don't care if you want it or not. I'm going to give it to you. This is the word of God, isn't it? Hold it up. Is this the word of God? For the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word reads us. And when my heart says, I'm fasting for the right reason, I'm praying for the right reason, I'm answering for the right reason, the word begins to reveal some things beyond what I knew before. So I step, if you will, into the next level of progressive revelation and with that comes not knowing more but being more like what God has called me to be. 
And I, th- I think I know I'm talking to people that know that you may be the people that you will be here and therefore you will not go by way of, but you will go by way of. Glory, gl- glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So, so this is where in the Holy Lands, in, in Semitic languages, in ancient languages, the word mystery is not a woo weird thing that was hijacked by the warlocks and the witches and the superstitious and the gurus and the shamans and the juju leaders and, and, and all that garbage. No, no, M- mysterion in the beginning, to you and I who believe in in the one God, our, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We, we have a covenant with Abraham. It's a mystery how a man at a hundred years old and a woman beyond the childbearing age can go ahead and change their name and run around declaring who they are and not stagger the opposition of the adversary. And all of a sudden, God do something in them that changes them into and performs in their life the power of the covenant. And so, going back to uh, the principle the Lord told me to continue in, um, re- the, the principle of recall, the principle of recall, you understanding what I'm talking about? Yes. So, so today, I'm celebrating with you according to revelation time. And I'm going to explain myself. According to revelation time, today is the week of mysteries. You say, well, what are you talking about? I'm talking about what we just read in the 22nd chapter of Luke was not Good Friday. What we just read in the 22nd chapter of Luke was was the first day of secrets. It was the last supper Christ would have before the, the overcoming of death, hell, and the grave to appear to us during the 40 days. It was where the Lord ate the Passover prior to his betrayal. Judas ran out that night. Are you catching this? So, so today, that's where we are. Are we not in the 22nd chapter of Luke? Yes. So we're not, we're not right now at a time when Christ has been, you know, anointed by Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea with 150, or is it 100? 100 pounds of spikenard that is more than any rich man has ever been anointed and, and he's been put in the, in the grave. That's not where we are tonight. Tonight we're in chapter 22. We're operating on revelation time because the, the word of God was instituting the New Testament before anybody laid hands on him. As a matter of fact, he was instituting the New Testament for you and I to leave with us the ability to keep on celebrating his presence at the table. His life at the table. His invitation at the table, at the altar. He is alive today, thank you. And he is present today. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Now, if you don't understand me, you're going to misunderstand me. You'll say, well, Dr. Fuchs, is, he doesn't know it's Good Friday. Listen, you can have any kind of day you want. But if you want a God day, you don't want Jesus in the grave. If you want a God day, you want the Lord is in the house. You want the Savior is in the house. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. 
So, so today I'm teaching on Hoshana. Yeah. Save now. Because if I, if I can get ahead of myself and then go back, that night, remember, Satan entered into Judas that night, and Judas left. Eleven of us, human beings but are called by God, disciples, we had no clue. We thought he's going to finance a reach. We had no idea. We thought he was going to go do something charitable or give to the poor. Isn't that in your Bible? Yes. And so that means our Lord at that moment of celebrating the Passover with the disciples was full of the optimism and the faith of his mission. Yes. And remember, we ushered him into the city. Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And we called him king and we declared him Lord. And, and he said if we didn't do that or if humanity didn't do that, the rocks will cry out. It was a moment that is prophetic. Today, there's a revelatory prophetic reality to the fact that the Lord is sitting right in your house. You're sitting right in his house. You're eating right in his presence. His healing belongs to you. His deliverance belongs to you. His salvation belongs to you. His presence is yours. Please listen like you've never listened before. I'm going to try to teach because I don't want to preach tonight. See, if it was 12, 12 people and, and their teacher who is Lord, he's already gone into the temple, remember? He set things in order. You know what he did? After he did the lame and the blind, the scriptures say, came to him at that temple and got healed. It was the same week. This is like five days into coming into the city. So he's, he's like... Cruising off of, if we leave him alone, everyone will believe on him. What I'm talking about, not him, his, his apostles, his disciples. They have no idea. They, they were not burdened by what tomorrow may bring. Because I'm sorry, but I, I'm not sorry, but I, excuse me for believing that my Savior was victorious 100% of the time. He never lost his grasp on the victory. He fulfilled his mission to give me an ability to fulfill his call and reach the finish line. Glory be to God. Glory to God. And you will make it. You will stand. You will believe. You will rise up. You will change. You will be transformed. Hallelujah. Amen. So then the Lord, the Lord, because Hoshana means what? Save now. Shout it like an army. Save now. Well, wasn't he closer to the payment for salvation? Yes. Shout it again. Save now. What's the next part? Send prosperity now. now. Glory to God. So, so the Lord is having miracles, blind and lame. And, uh, and then he goes with the disciples and he says, I have desired, I have longed, you could see this in your own study, I, I've longed to eat or celebrate this Passover with you. Now we know what the Passover is, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Let me ask you this. When you pass over the Red Sea, how do you pass over? Sickly? No. Weak? No. Afflicted? No. Destroyed? No. Because the Passover means you ate and partook of the covenant given to you, and you said the Lamb of God belongs to me. Are you listening? And then you put the, the blood of the lamb 
on your doorposts, etc. So when you came out, you came out with wagons full of what you need for a mission. You came out with strength for what you need. And you came out of being a slave to being a free person. Now I know I'm, I'm supposedly telling you things you know. But I want you to know where the idea for freedom came from where it was paid for, how Jesus procured it in order to liberate each and every one of us from our previous slavery to the devil and make us saints, glory be to God, and children of the Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're following? Yes. So that when, we, when the Lord said, I have longed to celebrate the Passover with you, everyone at that Passover, every Passover since the Passover was to remember that the Lord brought us out to call into remembrance. And then the Lamb himself came. Now, I don't have time to go into it, but if you remember, we started there, and there is a cup first that the Lord takes, and... um, By that time, of course, because of the accounts, and um, do you remember the foot washing? How many think that's a mystery? So these secrets, these things that fill that holy week, fill that holy week to make that holy week a segment in time that cannot be denounced. Because at the the next couple of days, the grave can't hold them. But right here, He's having a supernatural anointed time, instituting an ordinance, a sacrament, an eternal call to participate together in the fact that our Redeemer liveth. And until he comes, we will remember him. We will call him to remembrance. We can admit his presence. We can magnify his person, etc. If you're glad about that, shout hallelujah three times. So at that time, Judas was gone. Do you you understand? So we see the Lord took, and and, and here's what he said. You talk about miracles. Because this house here became the, the church for a minimum of 500 years as the mother church in Jerusalem. It was John Mark, the... It was Mark's mother's house. John Mark's related to um, uh, the son of consolation, Barnabas. And so this was called the Church of the Apostles or the Church of Zion. This is where the upper room is. This is where Pentecost happened. And so remember we talked about how the Lord walked into the temple, set things in order, and that today we mentioned the lame came and the blind came and he healed them. Yes. Now at this moment, he's over at a neutral location, but it's not really neutral. It's so prakatara limanda. It's directed by the Most High. Just like I asked and you said the Holy Ghost sends them. So they said, where do you want us to celebrate the Passover, Master? And he said, go into the city And a man bearing or carrying a pitcher will meet you. Follow him. You read all the... And whatever house he goes into, follow him into that house. Whoo, glory to God. You know that servant had to be uh, working for a house of faith. And you know the owner or the good men of the house had to be a man of faith. Because most of you here don't look like you led a stranger like Peter and John walk into your house and ask you where the upper room is. And I don't blame you. I taught you good. Amen. (laughs) Keep the Bible in one hand and whatever you need in the other. But isn't that, isn't that wild? 
and we walk and we find him. We, fi- we find the man. But we follow the servant. He goes in the house. Peter and John, they walk in behind him. And they ask the owner, where is the upper chamber? And Jesus had said, he will take you to an upper chamber that is very large and furnished. There, make ready. So we, we, we get the rest of the team together and we prepare the Passover meal. The Paschal lamb, the, the bread, everything necessary to celebrate the Moses Passover properly. And it had to have somewhere between three or four cups that are wine uh, cups to celebrate, if that makes sense. And it, it's different, uh, it's different right, R-I-T-E. How many understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Well, this is why I mention it, because Jesus takes the last cup of the Passover that was talking about him. And he hands it to the founding apostles. <laughs> Whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Our, our spiritual ancestors, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our founding church fathers, thank you very much for your enthusiasm. The writers of our spiritual constitution called the New Testament. Hey, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit here. And, he, and, we, and we divide it among ourselves. So we take the cup and he said, divide this. Isn't that what we read? Yes. And, and FCD, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm getting you ready for the, you know, the, the dunamis of FCD. <laughs> and so we, 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 when we finish that cup, see, because here, look at, look at this. In uh, verse, is it 17? And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread. So you notice verse 19 makes it look like he, he he took the bread Do you see what I mean? He took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So he ends or fulfills rather the Old Testament Passover and he institutes the New Testament one. Robert, read the next verse after 17. Read read verse 18. I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Keep reading. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Read next verse. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, do you notice, and, and we don't have time to inspect, but you have the Word of God. You can inspect. I'm going to do a little more teaching. But do you notice how he ended, literally fulfilled what was talking about him coming? And then he instituted what we're called to celebrate in remembrance of him. Well, that wouldn't even make sense on, on the first day of mysteries when I'm sitting at the table or at the supper with the master himself, my teacher, that I think he's here to stay forever and he's not going to leave. That wouldn't even make sense. What do you mean as long as I do this, remember you? So, so what he's saying is this body is going to be broken for you. I'm going to do something for you. And this, why? Because salvation belongs to you. Because forgiveness of sins belongs to you. Because the bread of heaven has come down to be your meat and your strength, your energy, your vitality. Hallelujah. So he institutes what an ordinance is. How many have ever heard that communion is an ordinance? Wave at me if you've heard that. 
Now, some groups call it a sacrament or, a, um, you know, a sacramentum. Some people call it mysterion or a mystery. Some people call it uh, corbono or, or, or offering. And some people call it ordinance. But every one of those words mean the same thing. An ordinance, according to the dictionary, is something put into motion by a higher power, whether it's governmental whether it's, uh, it, it's royal. And then in the dictionary, especially the American uh, English dictionary, I believe it is, a number of others, it says, specifically, the Christian rite, R-I-T-E, of the Eucharist. Meaning that an ordinance is something that is instituted by a higher power not to be controverted. Yeah. So the Lord finished the Passover of you waiting for the Savior to come. And he started Christ our Passover, which is your Savior is come. Glory to God. Your healing is in the house because the healer is in the house. Your deliverance is in the house because your deliverer is in the house. Your prosperity is in the house because your success is a person. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so in the middle of this, uh, Satan enters into Judas while they're still celebrating the meal. Do you remember he that dips with me the same as the one and immediately and then he leaves and and 11 of us think he went to give something to the poor. And then the Lord goes ahead and he takes the bread and he begins to bless it. And he calls the bread that he's blessing now different than what he called the bread that he's blessing before. Because the bread he's blessing according to the Moses rite. He said, thank you God that causes bread to come down of the earth. The bless." The bread he's breaking and giving to you and I is his body and it's the bread that comes down from heaven. Glory be to God. It's what he does to your humanity. It's what he does to my humanity. Hey, 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 hey. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. glory. I'm not going to preach tonight, today, whatever time it is. And, and here's, here's a good word for you because the Lord visited me. I'm, I'm, it's a good word for you. Eleven people were kept. I want you to hit someone and say, none of them were perfect. <laughs> but listen, they became quite heroic and quite saintly and quite significant in the kingdom of God. Yes. Let's not ever fall into the trap of thinking they were always as messed up as they were during their training time. <laughs> right? Right? And so, if you notice, the Lord in his prayer says, he says, have, he said that he has lost none. Out of those you have given me, Father, I have lost none. Except or save the son of perdition or the son of damnation. He's talking about Judas titled Iscariot. That the scripture might be fulfilled. So, now, he, he has us as a circle. And there's 11 of us there. And... We don't have his anointing on us except by way of delegated authority and by way of what, but his presence uh, makes us get along with him and even then we ask stupid questions. <laughs> Are you listening? But we're humanity, aren't we? And we're kept. What I'm saying is in that house, although the Romans have heard that he's been herald king and the religious leaders were going ahead and bidding on uh, what he's going for at the Judas Iscariot auction. (laughs) 
So in other words, there was a lot of trouble out there. Spirits of murder out there. A lot of weirdness out there. But where the Lord is. Where the Lord's table is. Where you're gathered at. Even before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there was enough protection and preservation to keep you just comforted because he's with you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. And so he took the cup likewise after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you the blood was not shed yet but he's talking one day prior actually that night is going to be later on the night of his betrayal you want to sit down a minute let me talk to you can I give you some mysterium listen if you let God work with you man This stuff will grow hair on your head if you need it. (laughs) Whatever you need. Have thine own way, Lord. You know. And here's what I saw out of the sacred scriptures today. And I saw this because that upper room where, where the Lord is at is exactly where, and I knew this, I found that out from the Lord and then validated it years ago. We were still probably, what, 30 years ago when, I, when the Lord spoke to me about the upper room being the same location where the Holy Spirit fell. So the Holy Spirit fell on that same upper room that 120 were gathered in, the same place the Lord celebrated the New Testament Passover or should I say, he instituted the ordinance of uh, the Eucharist or communion in that upper room. So I want to talk to you about four things that were there. Because that became the church of Zion or the church of Jerusalem or the church of the apostles. Although we met in homes all over the place, broke bread daily, because you can't house the thousands that we became in one location. But that was looked at as the mother church, quite a, a big place, quite a big place, and that's where Peter went and beat on the door when he was released from prison by the angel that one time. So there were four things there. The Word was there. God the Word was there. So that means the apostles' doctrine was there. Fellowship was there. That means it was a prototype of the New Testament church. Glory be to God. Uh, The breaking of bread was there. My, this is good stuff. And then, right after supper, the Lord and the disciples sang a psalm went out to the Mount of Olives, and when he was out there, prayers were there. Peter's prayers were, you know, kind of like Peter's walking on the water. He went to sleep. Jesus' prayers caused him to sweat great drops of blood. So the thing we continued in, apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers are all Four spiritual components were present there at the Lord's Supper when he had all 11 of us participating together with him in his real presence. How will you act if Jesus was sitting at the table with you and handed... My God. My God. My God. Glory. 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 And so he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And, and, it's so, and so you're eating bread, but you're not eating average bread. The word himself 
is the performer of all that he is. So if everything that the Old Testament talked about is about him and he hands you something and calls it what it is, then you're eating not a sick body, not an afflicted piece of bread, not something common or un- You're eating up. You're rising up. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, you getting anything out of that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because the Lord, the Lord's presence, and he, he, he selected us. I mean, like, this became something that the entire extent church body would learn about. You know, it became early on. But we're not talking about, you know, a few days from now. You know, we'll jump up and down and say he's risen. The, uh, you know, the Lord is risen. Truly he's risen and we are witnesses. of. The, no, we're talking right now about the fact that in that upper room, 11 people had a preview. Yes. Glory be to God. They were told before the body was broken and before the blood was shed, what that will do to significantly affect the the human condition in the world today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 So this this is my cup in the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. You may be seated. Look with me, please. Just wanna, wanna, wanna have us right here because I'm recalling. Just for I'm recalling today. I'm happy to recall today the secret supper. Because why is that important? Because the secret supper is the living Lord. Bodily present with us. Now I know we're this side of resurrection. But I'm calling to recall the power of being with Jesus before the resurrection. I'm going to make an argument for it. All right, from the days of John the Baptist until now, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Another scripture, he healed them all that it might be fulfilled. Himself took our infirmities and carried our diseases. So to the all that were healed, they didn't want to wait for the cross. And they didn't want to wait for the resurrection. And salvation wasn't available to the feeble. But when somebody was willing like that Syrophoenician woman to say, Yea, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs. When we identified who he is, not only what he's going to do in the future, or what he can do for us, but who he is. When we identified who he is, we got the benefit of who he is. We serve a good God. We serve a living God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God forevermore. And so, so yeah, yeah, he, he's alive to die no more, but he was the living one then. He was so living that he could have asked for 12 legions of angels and they would have got him out of there. He would have stayed living. The only reason he laid down his life by his own power is to yank me out of a nature of sin, yank you out of a condition of being lost and bless us with sanctification, salvation and redemption. And thank God that he did. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the power of resurrection. 
Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord for what I mean, you know, nobody. How many will agree there's nobody that could have carried what he carried? And nobody could have. No, nobody. No, nobody. <laughs> My God. Nobody. I mean, I, who? Thank God for Jesus. And thank Jesus for God. And, 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 and the word was with God. And the word was. And the one. Amen. I mean, talk about Mysterion. Amen. And you know, there are, you know, some things you'll understand better by and by. You know, that's the truth. But we, you know, we're seeing some things here. So, preparing yourselves to celebrate Holy Communion and the, um, the altar or the table of the Lord. It's whose table? And so, whoever told me that I go to the Lord's table because he's absent, but I need to remember him because he went down in history 2,000 years ago. If that's the case, let's change the name of the table. Who told you that the Lord's table is where the Lord is absent and you need to remember him. I'm not even going to answer those thoughts. Not, I'm not even going to do, oh, well, you know, we know he's present spiritually. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> just, just stop it. Just stop it. I'm going to delete that off of your... <laughs> Isn't that right? It's the Lord's table. Yeah. And so when he said, this do in remembrance of me... He said, I'm never going to leave you. He tells us that. I'm never going to forsake you. I'm with you always to the end of the age. But then for, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Uh, as a matter of some will be. We have it in the scriptures. And then he says, do this in recall of me. So our confession has always been, Lord, we confess. Um, your, we remember your death. We confess your resurrection. And we anticipate your coming. Glory be to God. How many think that's good doctrine? Yes. And so if we confess his resurrection, then we must confess his divinity. If we confess his divinity, we must confess his omnipresence. If we confess his omnipresence, he's never absent off of your bread, off of your table, off of your altar, off of your gathering, off of your fellowship. He's He's in the bread, on the bread, under the bread, around the bread, in your spirit, in your soul, in your body, in your family, in your house, in your... Hey, hey! He's the one that filleth all in all. Glory be to God. Hey! It's omnipresent. He said, thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. Magnify your name. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's not. It's our prayer. And, and, ready? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive. Yeah, 
against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the glory forever amen look at someone right now and say if the lord jesus taught me to pray god's will be done on earth as it is in heaven and jesus paid everything necessary for god's will to be done in my life i believe that today is a supernatural accelerated day of experiencing the manifestation of the blessed mysteries of the presence of the king in our house now if you believe that make some noise about it somebody Glory to God. 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 Now I'm, I'm going to share with you this and we'll move on. I only touched on it a little bit in, in, in my book, Living on the Cutting Edge, but I have teaching on it throughout some of the International Miracle Institute curriculum. Stay on your feet a minute. I talked about the spirit of intercession. Today when I went into the four components, Dr. Robin, we continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers, plural. Now when the, the man of God tells us, praying always with all manner of prayer, in Ephesians, Paul tells us that in the sixth chapter, I believe. All manner of prayer, we know there are various uh, streams of prayer. There's petition, there's consecration, dedication, there's intercessions, right? Yes. There's all kinds of prayers. Now, if you notice when Christ went out to the Mount of Olives or to Gethsemane, after the, 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 the gathering at the upper room and they sang a hymn, the symptoms that come on you, on your physicality, whenever the Spirit of God may be calling you to have a breakthrough in prayer. Those are the symptoms that came on the disciples. And the Lord said to Peter, he said, out of everybody, he said, Satan wanted to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith would not fail. How many are glad that God can give us the faith to pray for somebody else? How many are glad you're, you're praying somebody, you're keeping them in the right track, you're keep, keeping them in their lane? Hallelujah. And also, he said, I pray for you that your faith will not fail. Well, Peter, you know what happened to him? He fell asleep. Because three things will happen when intercession's on you. And this is a freebie. You won't know what it is till you develop a sensitivity to intercession. One, you'll feel tired. You'll think it's physical weariness. Two, you'll feel hungry and you'll feel like you just want to eat. And three is you'll feel like you should just do a bunch of entertainment and entertaining or whatever and you'll try to do that away. Not that I'm knocking those things, but how many understand if you're called to pray through up to another level and you try to entertain yourself for about two or three months, that's the wrong thing to do. And, and the Lord, and I call it winning your battles before they manifest or fighting your battles before they manifest. And that's what our Lord did in Gethsemane. He went ahead and prayed and he prayed the more earnestly and he went the third time and prayed. If anybody should not have had to pray three times, it's our Lord. But he went in there and when he did it, he came back and he said, get up. He... And, and when the, the people came, whom do you seek? Said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm he. And they went backwards and fell down. If you could just say, I am, and the power of God could slay your opponent, 
You prayed through, somebody shout. Somebody shout. Amen. Amen. So, so just to let you know, because many of you, you have a spirit of intercession. Sometimes you pick up things that are out there in the world. They're not even your warfare. Anybody here knows what I'm talking about? Yes. Let me see your hands. Wave up. Okay, I feel better now. Thank you, Jesus. Wave again. Okay. And so that's, that's all it is. And thankfully, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit or if you're not, you can either pray in the Spirit or you can go to the Word of God and pray out of the Psalms or out of the Scriptures or whatever. And you'll get anointed. I'm telling you, you'll start, you know, the, the, you'll be in the closet. And then next thing you know, you'll come out of the closet. Woo! Uh, the, one that, the one that sees in secret will reward you publicly glory to God come on now come on I've come to rewind the clock of your strength I've come to rewind glory 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 hallelujah hallelujah These are some good notes from February. <laughs> I took all myself. You may be seated. And please take a moment with me at 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. Sixteen and seventeen, and th this is important because I told you I wanted to re I wanted to recall uh, the secret supper, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Now, if we didn't go here, we wouldn't know that the secret supper became a permanent provision for the body of Christ. But when we go here to First Corinthians, we're, we're seeing the Gentile world is being directed by. Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus, who was not even at the communion table with the Lord or the Passover meal with the Lord. He wasn't even there. But, of course, he met the Lord, ran into the Lord like a... ran into the Lord on that road. I've, you know, I've ran down that road with the Lord. Amen. But he ran into the Lord, and the Lord just you know, knocked him on his donkey. He knocked him off his donkey on his donkey. It's a King James, Dr. Harfoos joke. And, and so, so, but of course, the Lord revealed to him some things, but there's no reason to doubt at all that the Apostle Paul confirmed anything that he knew or received with the apostles that he met with, Peter and John and James. He met with them because he did not want to run in vain. Remember that? And so we know that that's the truth. Is that too much teaching? No. All right, well, he tells us here, he tells the Gentiles here, he says, uh, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Glory to God. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we are all, or because we are all, partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Well, yes, Paul, I think they are. 
And so, so if, if you look at that, and look with me at the 11th chapter, and verse 23. Again, it's the Corinthian church being told how to celebrate their own uh, available re recall of the very presence of the Lord in the room. And then go beyond that and experience the very presence of the Lord in a unique way inside. So that not only are we filled with the Holy Spirit, but the touch of stabilization and energization that he brings by the Spirit beyond our ability to limit because he's living, he's alive, and my mortality is subject to his immortality. My weakness is benefited by his strength. His spirit will quicken my mortal body. It is according to the power that worketh in us. And so I affirm together with you that the re recall is not a remembrance because I wasn't at Mark's house. A recall is an admonishment, encouragement, and affirmation that my Savior is alive. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave and has made provision for me to participate in something that is holy and, and something that is pure. And so the Apostle Paul says it. Uh, and, and you could see that. Do you have that pulled up? The cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not what? Is it not the communion of what? That's the bread. The blood of Christ. And so here, he's talking obviously about some kind of a mysterious way with which you and I are going to um, allow the Lord to move in on his own table and bless us. You're, you're going to eat bread. But you're not going to eat natural bread. You're going to eat bread that God's in on. Child of God, if you don't admit that God's in on this bread, you're always going to need a healing. But when you know that God's in on this bread, you might live in divine health. God's in on your body. And the healing's okay. Are you listening to me? But divine health is good. And so I'm going to explain it. I'm going to take it a little bit. Because people just don't. Do you believe the Lord lives in your body? Yes. So he doesn't just live in your spirit, does he? The Lord lives in your body. Yes. Do you believe that when you're here, if the Lord delays, but the time comes for you catching away, that this body will take on a different constitution? Yes. Do you believe that that rapture, that... That, that transformation will be from the inside out. Yes. Death will be swallowed up in victory. There's a fish on the inside of you called resurrection. <laughs> He's bigger than us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has prepared a fish for you and I. He will swallow us and take us to the shores of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when we worship the Lord and we, we, we say, okay, God, there's nothing impossible for you. Now, I have no idea why you would choose these, these, these natural things to use them as funnels of spiritual uh, empowerment. I have no idea, but I didn't invent it. Every place I go in your scriptures, I see it. Every place I go in the book of Acts, I see it. Every place I go in history, the church believes it and sees it. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to drink in faith. Yes. Yes. At, 
the Lord's table. Did I lose my notes? In the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Stop. So this is, notice, is he not in secret Thursday? Is he not in the Thursday of mysteries? He's definitely not in Good Friday, is he? Right? And so, so why would the apostle Paul, who wasn't saved until several years after, he persecuted the church and he threw us in prison and, and was an overseer upon at least the murder of Stephen. Maybe there were many others more breathing threatenings against the church. He is converted by the Lord and he's challenged to be baptized and he does. He gets filled with the Holy Spirit. He receives his revelation from God. Why would he say it was delivered to me by the Lord that the Lord the same night in which he was betrayed unless that night was the night that the Lord, the Lord instituted the ordinance. The Lord instituted the ordinance. The Lord called it for what it is. The Lord said, take, eat, this is. Take, drink, this is. The Lord said, I'm going to give you blessing through this. The Lord says, as often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death. The Lord instituted something that if the Lord tarries a thousand years from now, the church will continue to acknowledge what he has put here because it wasn't voted on by man it was instituted by God excuse me for being a little enthusiastic about immortality see when the Lord instituted this do you believe it? you believe he did? All right. When he instituted that, Robert, he had put on mortality. And, and all of us know Christ was fully God, but also fully man. Human as if he was not God, but God as if he's not human and one person. You say, well, I don't understand that. Mystery. <laughs> Mystery. The point is, ten times at least, humanity tried to kill the Lord. But why didn't we kill him? You know the answer, I am I. Why couldn't we stone him? And, and because it was not his time, and he came into the earth to do it for our sake, and by his authority, he can keep himself. But if he stayed here, are you listening to me? He is potentially subject to physical death. That means mortal. So when he instituted this ordinance, he was mortal. Later that night, Peter took a sword and tried to defend him. And the Lord, by the power of the Spirit, healed the, the soldier related to Caiaphas and went on. And, and then we saw him go through treacherous torture and and blasphemous words and insults and you know the story you know the truth and then he died he, he you know physically died and then rose again and then see you pushed me into Sunday morning <laughs> but see only because I'm reading the apostle Paul and he's talking that side of the resurrection. In other words, the one that instituted this having legal right to be sent by heaven 
to tell it like it is and to start another covenant. And he say the Moses covenant is over because all Moses was talking about is the day when the Messiah will come and I am the savior of the world. Now start recognizing that a new covenant is here to deliver humanity. Save now, deliver now, send prosperity now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And he rose bodily, he rose bodily from the dead, and he's alive, and that spiritual body is the same body, and yet a different level of constitutional glory, co-equal with God, spirit, soul, and body, uh, although he never fell from co-equality with God in his incarnation. Boy, having a hard time with all you people out there. Are you catching that? And so he, he can go through walls. He could be ever. He, he's omnipresent everywhere. But he, so the same disciples. We see him. There's no reason to change the ordinance. Just like there's no reason to change. Repent and be baptized. Does that make sense? So we carry that. And then what happens is the apostle Paul. Going all the way over to the Gentile world begins to plant churches and lead them to Christ and get, lead them to Christ and then plant churches and then teach them the things they need to learn. And here he's talking to a church that because they didn't understand how to inspect their heart and take the commonality out of it and granted they're Gentiles. How many know Gentiles are messed up people? They're, they're the nations, right? They're the nations. They're like you and I. They're the nations. So, because they are not understanding that the holy things belong to them because God wants to bless them and there is, there is an uncommon, there is a reverence, there is an appreciation, there is a revelation in the fact that the Holy Spirit is in on what we are acknowledging and what we're celebrating and what we're participating in beyond the uh, rational and all that. Uh, because of that, there were many sick in the Corinthian church. Apostle Paul said that. Are you here? In verse 39, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily or in an unworthy manner. In other words, if they don't know how to allow the Lord to be who he is in the form of blessing. Does that make sense? Yes. Eateth and drinketh condemnation or damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you. He's talking about the Corinthians. And many sleep or die. And so that verse wouldn't even be Bible. If you were just eating just a common piece of bread. And drinking a common cup. Of, 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 of uh, grape juice. A common cup of grape juice won't make you sick and kill you. Regardless of what kind of attitude you have about it. And, and I should rephrase that. It didn't make them sick. The devil made them sick because the protection and the preservation that was in the uncommon cup called the cup of blessing and the communion of the body of Christ wasn't able to minister to them the way uh, the Lord wanted them to. Another thing is also uh, ought, unforgiveness. This is where you examine yourself and you take time and to... Uh, this is why I take time to talk to us because, you know, you're going you're gonna to grab that next level in God. Yeah. You're going to grab that next level. Yeah. Yeah. So how do, how do we uh, grab the next level? Well, we found out that whatever seems to be out of time is only out of time to the passive because the violent, so, 
So the spiritual endowment that the Lord increases in us enable us to receive greater harvest from God than the circumstances may present because season and out of season no longer hinders the believer. Are you listening to me? This is good. I'm blessing myself to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Mm. Mm. I'm serious. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. This is, this is verse what? That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Now, would you agree that the Lord did that before the body was broken? Yes. So this was proof, right? So when the Lord would reappear fully alive to die no more, we would have no problem with the fact that he handed us a prophetic loaf before the cross to shower us with the baptism of fire in the upper room so we can break bread daily in the Holy Spirit from all over Jerusalem to all over the world because our Savior is now not just a rabbi. We understand. He's the Son of God, declared the Son of God with power. Because what? Progressive revelation. This do in remembrance of me. That word means in recalling me. Bringing me to your recall. Whatever you bring to your recall affects your presence. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. How many believe the New Testament is holy? Yes. How many believe the blood of Jesus is holy? Yes. According to the 12th chapter of Hebrews, we come to the church of the firstborn. How many believe Jesus is the firstborn? Yes. And we come to the blood of sprinklings, sprinkling that speaks. How many think the blood speaks? Yes. And the blood of sprinkling speaks better things than that of Abel. Yes. So, so now, 2,000 years almost removed, the blood of sprinkling speaks. Glory be to God, because the blood's alive. Yes. Invisible, but alive. Yes. Eternally alive. Yes. Will testify through all eternity that that's humanity has been inducted through salvifical power into the family of Almighty God because God the Word became the man so he through his side could bring out the blood and the water and do what is necessary to raise up a generation that is not first Adamically inclined but less Adamically redeemed. I'm going to stop till somebody shouts. Does that make sense? And, and so the blood of Jesus sprinkles not only our hearts from an evil conscience, but sprinkles the covenant, the vessels, and anything according to what the Bible says. And nothing is used by God in consecrated service except it be sprinkled. Glory be to God. Now in the old covenant, God somehow blessed the animals uh, you know, the animal blood and whatever, and it could sanctify to the purifying of the flesh. The New Testament, it says, how much more yeah. shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself with a spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Get ready to rise up above the accusations of your adversary and the oppositions. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Isn't that powerful? Mm, mm, mm. So this is my blood in the New Testament. And if we read the accounts in, in the three Gospels, it's listed. It's given for you and for many. For the remission of sins. And so when we look at the invitation of God. Let us therefore come. um, by He is consecrated for us a new and a living way. Through the veil. That is to say his flesh. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled. From an evil conscience. My heart is my interior. We talked about it. We talked about the Lord getting in the temple. My heart is my interior. The Lord sprinkles your heart. He takes stuff out of there that you can't get out of there with your own strength. He sprinkles your conscience. So when you remember the Lord, you remember vindication. When you remember the Lord, you experience salvation. When you remember the Lord, you experience deliverance. When you remember the Lord... Like the song says, he is here right now. He's here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't need to wait and you don't need to beg. He's passing out gifts for all who receive. He is here right now. He is here right now. He's here right now. He's here right now. now. Champion, he is here right now. The Lord is present. The, the Lord is present. Te prokatale le mende kien emesh takai. The New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now I want you to look at this with me please one more time. Do you have your, your Bible? I've received of the Lord that which I delivered to you. I received from headquarters. I received from God. I received from the Lord Jesus. Uh, This revelatory insight about the ordinance that I'm delivering to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. That means similarly he took the cup. What does that mean? He took the cup and lifted the cup up and blessed it. How many think that when the word speaks a blessing over you, the word gets some things done? Yes. Did, did we read it today? And it, and, and then, uh, we believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, right? And all things visible and visible. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Huh? God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not created. And, and by Him all things exist. So when the Word spoke, things happened. How many think when the word speaks about the loaf of your life, something happens? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So lift your right hand up today. I call you the bread. I call you one kind of bread. I call you compatible. I come against condemnation and guilt in your life. Go ahead and pray in tongues. Lord, if there's anybody here with aught or unforgiveness or in sin or inadequacy or in fear or disbelief, let that thing be washed now by the power of your almighty Holy Spirit. Let it be gone. We approach you with reverence and love. 
and we receive your invitation. Glory be to God forevermore. We thank you for it and honor you for it in Jesus' mighty name. You're the redeemed of the Lord and at home. You're the redeemed of the Lord at church. You're the redeemed of the Lord in your business. You're washed. You're clean. Condemnation will not rule you. Fear will not dominate you. Inhibitions will not be around you. The strength of the Lord. And so this Hosanna, this King, this this ordinance giver has decreed that in the house of God there will be the children's bread there will be healing there will be the children's bread there will be salvation there will be the children's bread there will be remembrance there will be the children's bread there will be presence there will be washing there will be clean there will be celebration there will be victory there will be joy there will be mercy Glory, glory, glory. Because as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do preach the Lord's death till he comes. If the Lord would allow me a moment, I'll tell you what that means. Would you like me to tell you what that means? It's explained in the scripture. In as much as the children, for as much as the children, say I'm a child, child. are partakers of flesh and blood. In other words, we're human. He also likewise took part of the same. He became human. That through death, give me the next few words. He might destroy him. And so when the Bible talks about the death of Christ, it never leaves him in the tomb. So when you, when you, the fact that you're still celebrating the Lord's table is that the Lord did not give this ordinance a day before he was sold and a day before he was nailed on the cross or whatever. Are you listening to me? And then he died. He gave this ordinance and rose again to see to it that you carry it out. Hallelujah. He's alive. And so the death of the Lord includes the purpose of his death because when he died, spirit, physically rather, uh, physical death, uh, he was quickened and um, he rose again. Is that enough? Just the capsule. I don't want to get into a lot of other things. And uh, for as often as you eat this bread. Now, if you notice that, that's the Apostle Paul talking. So that means that's doctrine. That's not just quoting the Lord. That's doctrine that came out of what happened on, 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 on the week of mysteries. Right? Uh, because as often as you eat this bread. What bread? The bread which we break. <laughs> uh, and, and drink this cup. What cup? The cup that we bless. The cup of blessing. You do show the Lord's death till you come. Well, what did the Lord do through his death? He destroyed him. Yes. That had the power of death. That is the devil. So as long as... the, the The more faith you have in this celebration, the greater you'll run up to receive. In in reverence, you'll run up to receive the ability to preach by participating in communion that your enemy is defeated already and your Lord is present. Your sins are forgiven. You're an heir of life. You're an heir of eternal life. And so that's where, why the Apostle Paul said, Wherefore, or that is why whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord because they're not going to be identifying that that is indeed by faith what they're participating in. So he told us, let a man, how many know that doesn't mean a male person? Right? 
that different spelling for male, like male man or whatever. But uh, you, you know what I mean. It's not a it's not a gender word. It's humanity. Let let a let a human being let every saint examine himself, and so let him eat. So. Put your hands on your spirit. Glory to God. Throughout the ages of my dealing with men, I've revealed in my sacred scriptures invitations made. I made invitations and beckoned to my chosen and supplied spaces of time and moments of opportunity for compatibility, dialogue, discourse, and transactions. And inspired my prophets to declare what would come fully and be made available when I personally come, manifest what is declared of me and what is written of me. The days are now here and have been days of invitation for whosoever will to come and be free from the burden of the dominion of the fallen Adamic condition and participating through passivity. I'm, 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 I'm calling, calling by invitation all children to come out of the passivity of tolerating the operation of the curse of the law and to come in the liberation and freedom of my provision and I will hold you and I will strengthen you and the things declared regarding you in the last of the last days will be fulfilled in your life individually and in your world collectively. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the day to cut off all affiliations with the Adamic fall and come to the table of compatibility and participation, receiving from a willing heaven the provision for the will to be done on earth, says the Spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.